government officials, governors from Western states, and private sector partners this morning to discuss how we can all work together to strengthen prevention, preparedness, and response efforts. In the meeting, the President asked participants what additional resources they needed and what immediate actions can be taken to pr protect communities, improve emergency preparedness, and address the growing wildfire threat, both by preventing them from happening and ensuring the federal government's response is as quick and effective as possible. Uh, and to do that, we also uh, announced a series of actions today to address the growing and severe threat of wildfires, protect communities from devastation, and save lives, uh, which were outlined this morning. We can certainly talk more about. As you may have also seen, in a few minutes, uh, the President will sign uh, the Sergeant Ketchum Rural Veterans Mental Health Act, which will create three new mental health centers for veterans battling severe mental health issues, including post-traumatic stress disorder. It's estimated that at least one in five veterans return from combat with a significant need for mental health support, yet 85 percent of veterans coming home to rural communities are in areas with a shortage of professional support. As the President had, has repeatedly reaffirmed, we have a sacred obligation to care for who, those who serve, and this bipartisan bill will help our rural veterans get the support they need. Later this afternoon, the President will also sign three additional bills, one to protect our climate from methane, one to protect consumers from predatory lenders, and one to protect workers from employment discrimination. Each of these bills are common sense protections that passed with bipartisan support. Bipartisanship, alive and well in Washington. Watch out. Um, also today, uh, the White House will host a virtual eviction prevention summit to support and facilitate coordination among local public officials, court officials, legal services, legal service organizations, local bar associations, community-based organizations, emergency rental assistance administrators, and local philanthropies from cities across the country to work on developing local eviction prevention action plans. This summit is just one of a number of steps we are taking, uh, that we announced last week, I should say, to keep people in their homes by protecting renters and helping state and local governments pre uh, prevent evictions. Uh, also, in, in our, uh, in our uh, ongoing news about getting vaccines out to the world, um, we are shipping 2.5 million doses of Johnson & Johnson vaccines to Colombia as a part of our continued effort to end the virus everywhere. Uh, finally, uh, sorry, I have two more things, and then we'll go to get to questions. Today, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris uh, led the U.S. delegation to the Generation Equality Forum in Paris and provided live virtual opening remarks. She restated the United States' commitment to gender equality, and she made the case about how gender equality is tied to democracy. Following her remarks, we announced several robust deliverables in three areas, gender-based violence, economic justice, and sexual and reproductive and health rights. As one final note, and as a point of privilege, uh, today is the last day of Pride Month, and I am honored to host a pre-recorded virtual convening on transgender equality uh, later this evening. At this convening, young transgender and gender non-binary leaders from across the country will share stories about the impact the state-level anti-transgender legislation has had on their well-being their experiences of multiple intersecting forms of discrimination and best practices for advancing acceptance. Uh, and the program will feature a range of officials uh, from the federal government as well as openly transgender athletes, leaders, and elected officials. With that, Josh, go ahead. Thanks, Jen. Two subject areas. Russian President Vladimir Putin says that a U.S. reconnaissance aircraft was operating in sync with a British destroyer last week in the Black Sea. Was the U.S. coordinating with the British ship and was this, as Putin claims, a provocation? Uh, I don't have anything to detail or confirm from you here from the podium. I'd certainly point you to the Department of Defense on any specifics. Uh, as the President uh, noted when we attended the summit, when he uh, participated in the summit just a few weeks ago, uh, our, objection, our, our objective, I should say, is certainly to move forward a, on a more predictable and stable relationship with Russia. We, he announced a number of forward-looking actions in that regard, uh, and that certainly is guiding our strategy. Uh, and then secondly, South Dakota Governor Christy Noem has actually used a donation from a Republican donor to fund the deployment of up to 50 South Dakota National Guard troops to the U.S. border with Mexico. Does the White House have any concern about this as a proper use of and funding mechanism for National Guard troops? I would certainly have to check with our team on that. Uh, Josh, I'm happy to do that after the briefing. Go ahead, Steve. Can you walk us through what the President will be doing tomorrow in Surfside, Florida? Will sure. he actually visit the building site? 
Uh, well, I know first there's a lot of questions about this, and as details become finalized and available, we will make them all available to you. So let me outline for you what we have at this point, which is pretty consistent with what I outlined just yesterday. Just one moment. Um, so while the President and First Lady, who is joining him on this trip, are in Florida <coughs> tomorrow, uh, they will be thanking heroic first responders, search and rescue teams, and everyone who's been working tirelessly around the clock. They will also meet with families who have been forced to endure this terrible tra tragedy. In terms of the logistics and the schedule of the day, we're still finalizing those details. Of course, we hope to have uh, them all nailed down before the end of the day, given this trip is tomorrow. But unfortunately, I don't have many additional specifics at so this point. Clear whether he'll visit the building or just not able to announce it yet? We're still working out the final components of the trip tomorrow. And as I, I would note, and the President repeated this to me multiple times yesterday, uh, every component of this is going to be, needs to be coordinated with officials on the ground. There is still an ongoing search and rescue effort on the ground, and we want to ensure we're not doing anything to pull away from those resources. And, and secondly, on Afghanistan, are you now days away from completing the withdrawal? I'm seeing a number of reports about this. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I would say that we remain on the timeline that the President announced just a few weeks ago, which is to get our troops out of Afghanistan while having a remaining diplomatic presence on the ground by September. In terms of the specifics of the, of the operational components of that, I'd certainly point you to the Department of Defense, but nothing has changed on our timeline or objective. Is the President planning an, an event around the, the pullout? There's not a, a planned event at this point that I'm aware of. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Uh, if I can follow up very quickly on mm -hmm. Afghanistan, sure. I know the timeline remains the same. Is the U.S. Can the U.S. commit that all interpreters, drivers, others who help the U.S. force during its commitment in Afghanistan will be out by the time of its departure? Well, I, I would say, Peter, that uh, what our focus is on now is expediting that processing. As you know, we announced just last Friday that we were taking steps to uh, evaluate options uh, for moving individuals to another location so that they could complete their processing, individuals who are already in the pipeline. In terms of the numbers or what that looks like, those operational components are still being worked through. So the potential is that there may still be some in we're, Afghanistan. We're, we're, no, we're, we're working to do that, which is what I conveyed on Friday. We're working to do that on the timeline. In advance of the withdrawal of U.S. troops. I would also note, though, that we will still have a diplomatic presence on the ground. That is our continued commitment, and that will continue after September. Let me ask you about the comments of, uh, of Austin Miller. He's the general there, the commander in Afghanistan for the United States, who said yesterday to reporters, civil war is certainly a path that can be visualized if it continues on the trajectory it's on. He said that should be a concern for the world. What does the president, what does this White House say about that concern from its top commander on the ground on Afghanistan, given their already seeing Taliban violence increase in large swaths of that country. Well, I would say, uh, Peter, that when the President met with the leaders of Afghanistan just last Friday, he reiterated our commitment to working with them and continuing to support them, whether it's security assistance, humanitarian assistance, or other ways that we can play a constructive role, even as the President is uh, continuing to, and we're continuing to operationalize on the withdrawal of our troops. I'd also note that when the President made the announcement about our decision, it was in part based on a timeline that was committed to by the prior administration of May 1st. First. And if we kept our troops in Afghanistan after May 1st, they would be shot at. Uh, and that was a decision that, as a Commander-in-Chief, he had to make. Uh, there have been assessments out there made by our intelligence community and others about the conditions on the ground. We are going to continue to work with leaders uh, in Afghanistan, as the President reaffirmed last Friday, but it's not changing our plans or our timeline for removing our troops. This last question is making headlines across the country right now. We just heard from the Pennsylvania Supreme Court that Bill Cosby's conviction for sexual assault has been overturned. They can no longer pursue those same charges against him in the future right now. The President obviously has long commitment to violence the violence against women act that he helped write the White House's reaction to that first of all well first as you noted those reports just came out shortly before I came out here uh, I don't have a direct response from the White House to uh, that announcement I will say which you touched on uh, and I'll just use the opportunity to reiterate that the president uh, has long been an advocate for uh, fighting against violence against women for ensuring that we are uh, raising uh, the voices and the stories of, of people who have been survivors of sexual assault that's something he has done throughout his career and will continue to do uh, but oh, I don't have a specific comment on that announcement today if we do have one after the briefing I'll make that available to all of you go ahead thank you Jen what does the White House think